Welcome everyone, today we're going to talk about a little known button on your camera that you may or may not have ever pushed. And I think this button's actually pretty important. I use it quite a bit um, on my DSLR camera when I'm shooting with it. I want to break it down, talk about why you might use it, why you might not use it, and kind of what it is. So let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing I want to talk a little bit about is aperture. So aperture, I would argue, is one of the most important creative controls we have as photographers. Uh, if you don't know, aperture controls not only the amount of light coming through the lens, but also the depth of field in the image. And if you remember, the depth of field is how much around your focus point is actually sharp. So whatever you focus on, imagine a, a flat plane equal distance away from your camera as the point that you focused on. And with more depth of field, more areas around that focus point are sharp. As an example, if you were shooting a portrait of me right now and you focused on my eyeballs, if you had a lot of depth of field, my eyes would be sharp and so would the background. If you had a little bit of depth of field or a shallow depth of field as we call it as a photographer, you would get just my eyes sharp and maybe my nose would be blurry and my ears would be blurry. So there's kind of an example with depth of field. Obviously landscape photographers are generally going to want more depth of field, more things sharp from front to back than say a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer. But here's the thing, when you look through the viewfinder of your DSLR camera, you are always seeing the minimum amount of depth of field you can have. What I mean by that is this is a 35 f1.4 lens, f1.4 being the maximum amount of light, so the biggest opening, but also the shallowest depth of field. Whenever I look through the viewfinder, I am seeing this lens as it is at f1.4. If you have an f2.8 lens, you're always seeing it at f2.8 when you look through the viewfinder. That's great because it lets in the most light, it lets us see the clearest picture, and it lets us really see what we're composing, but even if you dial your aperture down to f8, f11, f16, whatever it happens to be, you're still seeing through the viewfinder the depth of field of the widest open aperture your lens can create. Which is a little bit weird. We talk about depth of field, but we're never actually seeing it through the viewfinder. Well, that's where this little button comes in, which is called the depth of field preview button. And what this does is, it's, it's in a little bit different position for every camera. Some have it down here at the bottom. Uh, I would look in your manual, consult your manual for where your specific button is. But what this button does is when we push it, it actually stops the lens down to whatever aperture we have set on our camera. So as an example, this is a 1.4 lens, like I've said, if I set my camera to f8 and I push in the depth of field preview button, it will temporarily stop the lens down to f8. And if you're looking through the viewfinder, that means that when you push that button, your camera is going down to f8, so you see through the viewfinder the amount of depth of field you would have at f8, which is pretty sweet, right? Now, obviously also the view through the viewfinder will get dimmer because f8 lets in less light, so you're gonna have to strain to see a little bit, but it really lets you visualize what your depth of field's gonna look like before you shoot. Now, quick disclaimer, number one, if you have a mirrorless camera or you have a DSLR and you shoot with live view, you shoot using the screen, you are already getting depth of field preview. By most mirrorless cameras and most live view on the back of the camera, the default is to preview your depth of field on the back of the camera. So you're, you're seeing that. Mirrorless folks, you'll see it through the viewfinder as well if you haven't changed those default settings. Second disclaimer is DSLR folks, if you have an entry level DSLR like a Canon Rebel or a Nikon 3000 series, something like that, you may not have a button down here. Check your menu though, check the manual. Sometimes there's a way to configure a different button to do it. Maybe your button's in a different place. But if you do have a button here, chances are it is configurable for depth of field preview. So you can see the depth of field before you shoot, which I use all the time. Um, as a landscape photographer, sometimes you don't need F32, you only need F8. But there's no way to know that unless you're in live view or you use the depth of field preview button. And looking through the viewfinder, you basically just turn on your camera and you look through the viewfinder. Let me turn mine off live view here. You look through the viewfinder, you hold down that depth of field preview button and you adjust your aperture until you get the amount of depth of field that you want while looking through the finder. It's pretty darn awesome. Portrait folks, you might also wanna use it. If you're shooting a portrait of someone and you notice that their eyes are sharp every shot but not their eyelashes or not their ears or their nose and you want a little bit more, mm, little bit more definition in the eyebrows or ears or somewhere else in the image, you might not know whether f5.6 would be better or f4 or whatever you want to do. So hold down that depth of field preview button, rotate your aperture until you're happy with the amount of detail 
you're seeing on the person's face. Do keep in mind though, portrait folks, that whenever you make a little bit more depth of field on the person's face, the background is also going to get sharper as well. So I just wanted to make this video pretty quick, just a quick little overview of what this little button is down here that you may have never thought of before. It's depth of field preview, it can super help you. If you always shoot wide open, if you always shoot at f2, it's probably not going to be that big of a deal, but if you find yourself adjusting aperture or you're trying to learn how aperture works and you want to see it in real time, I think it's a really helpful thing to give a try. So definitely give it a shot. If your camera has it, you might as well try it and know about it. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, you know what to do. If you have a comment, question, concern, whatever it is, leave it in the comment section down below. And you can also subscribe down there or up there to our channel. We put videos out every single week on photography or editing or some photo related thing. Sometimes a little bit of video just sprinkled in there when we get all uh, kind of want to freshen it up a little bit. So definitely subscribe down there. You can hit the bell to be updated with future videos. And lastly, special thanks to Canon. Canon is a great sponsor of our school and they let us use these cinema cameras to capture this great content. So you guys give that depth of field preview button a try, play with aperture. It's such a creative control and it's such a good way to really differentiate your images from everyone else's. Thanks for watching.